Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested here, and it's that time of the year, the end of 2021. I can hardly believe it. But as is tradition on Tested, as we enter the holiday season, the whole Tested team is gonna be sharing some of their favorite stuff, tools, techniques, products that they've learned about and used this past year, hopefully uh, to inform some of your holiday purchases or things that you might be interested in. And the first thing I have to share, well, it. It's not even on the table. It's my favorite 3D printer of the year. I didn't, couldn't bring it actually in, but I do have some prints from that printer. It's the Elegoo Saturn, and it's been my workhorse this year. If you've watched some of my 3D printing videos, the resin printing videos, uh, the resin time-lapse videos I've been able to do, I've been able to get some really amazing prints um, from some of the Patreons that I back and some of the 3D modelers I've been following on places like Instagram or even Kickstarter. And here are just a few examples of some of the prints that I've been getting out of the Elegoo Saturn from, uh, this is probably the largest one. This one's from Lord of the Print. It's their Kaiju inspired by Godzilla, uh, printed in a clear resin. Uh, and it just shows you how far we've come in and how accessible modern resin printers are. Yes, there's a whole process you have to go through, a whole cleaning process, a whole workflow. Uh, but once you've got it down, it becomes incredibly enjoyable. And these two in particular are from our friend Johnny Fraser Allen over at What a Workshop. Uh, he launched a Kickstarter earlier this year and actually has a new one going on right now with more of his creations. I'm such a big fan of his artwork. I'll have links to those in the description below. And related to some of that resin printing and model making work I've been having fun with at home is this small little tabletop vise. I actually learned about this from the Gunpla community. Uh, this one's from Dispay. I think it's pronounced D-S-P-I-A-E. And it's just a small, sturdy tabletop vise on a ball head here. So you can move it around and lock it in. And then I have it actually clamping a 3D print just to show you the size of object that you can have, but it comes with a bunch of pins. Of course, if you have a print that doesn't stand on its own and you do some work on it, that's where a vise like this becomes very useful, even though this is made for uh, like snap fit model kits. If you wanna do some decal applications or do some uh, fine detail work, having a vise like this that clamps tightly, you can put pins in, uh, to change the grip arrangement and also comes with these little plastic sleeves so you can protect the pins and protect the models that you're working with so it doesn't actually damage them. It's a uh, price a little bit on the high end, I think about $50 and there are some jeweler vises that you can get for in the 20 to $30 range. But I like how sturdy it is. I like how small this is. It just kind of sits on my desk, super compact and when I'm not using it to hold up a 3D print or a piece of model making, uh, you can actually just use it as a little bit of a display stand as well. You know, hold up your business cards or something. Uh, but a small tabletop vise, I'm really enjoying that. Next up, I have a little bit of lighting uh, products that I've really become enamored with this year. If you followed some of my projects, I've been obsessed with different types of LED strips uh, for miniatures. Uh, and there are three types of LED strips or LED products uh, that I learned about this year that are untraditional, uh, the unconventional, not your standard sticky back LED strip that you would use to you know, line your display cases or put in your computer case. Uh, the first is this fake neon uh, diffuse LED strip. It's actually a piece of silicone, uh, tinted silicone. Here it's blue. And you would think that if you lay down your LED strip, uh, the lights would be pointed upward, but in this case, the clever thing they've done to make these faux neon strips for sign display work is actually have the LED strips laid sideways, which means that you can actually curve them and bend them in a way that you wouldn't be able to normally do with your standard uh, LED strip. So plugging this into a 12 volt power supply and it shows you how bright these get. They get you know, they get pretty bright. They come in a bunch of different colors. You can absolutely uh, adapt them to a, a dimmer. Uh, this one runs off of uh, 12 volts and they come when all sorts of different colors. There's actually a whole industry uh, that makes these specifically for those fake neon LED signs you might've seen on 
Etsy, uh, and they are cuttable. So if you look on the side, you can actually cut them and solder the connectors. There are also different plugs you can plug in um, to tie the ends or um, uh, ways to connect to the, the LED strip here so you can kind of wire a bunch of these in series um, and really fun to work with if you have a router, a laser cutter to make your own uh, neon, fake neon signs. Uh, another form of more traditional LED strips that I learned about this year are COB LED strips, chip on board. So this looks more like a traditional sticky back LED strip, uh, but instead of having the LEDs spaced apart very discreetly that you can see, uh, they're actually very tightly uh, connected and then also additionally diffused with a, a piece of silicone on top. And so this one is green. And if I plug it in again to our 12 volt power supply, you can see that creates, at least to my eye, a continuous bright light. Uh, Adam actually introduced me to these. He used them in his spacesuits that he built this past summer in lining the interior of the helmet to illuminate his face. And you now see these uh, all over. They're very, very uh, affordable, and you can get them in both 5 volt and 12 volt varieties. And they can, of course, be attached to dimmers, so you can dim them as well. But I love that continuous look of the LEDs. You can also cut them to length and solder them as well. And there are uh, accessories you can buy to clip them together if you don't wanna do the, uh, the manual soldering. COB LED strips, that's the keyword you wanna search when finding these. And lastly, this year I was also introduced to uh, silicone LED strands. These are a little less accessible in terms of where you can find them. Uh, you may have to find them overseas. I got them via AliExpress. But they're also, like COB LED strips, very tightly packed LEDs, and in this case, encased in a flexible silicone wire. Uh, they are fixed length. You can't cut them the size. I believe these are 100, and uh, these are about a foot long. Uh, they come in like 130 millimeter, two inches, foot long, three feet long. This one's about 30 centimeters, and uh, to run these, because these are three volts, I actually have another one of my favorite things this year. A lot of people have asked about this. This is a USB power supply. So you might have a desktop benchtop power supply. Highly recommend it if you're gonna do a lot of electronics work, but if you're going to the office and you wanna run something that's three volts, five volts, 12 volts, and I believe up to uh, 30 volts here, this one goes as low as 0.5 volts up to 30 volt output, you can actually run this off of a traditional uh, USB battery pack. This one just happens to look like a tape cassette, uh, which I like. So you plug this into USB, press power on. I have some alligator clips here, uh, and actually I have one with longer alligator clips. I have multiple of these because they're just that useful. And I can connect them. They are indicated uh, positive and negative, and then I press power on. There goes three volts into a flexible LED light. Extremely bright. I can decrease the voltage here to dim it a little bit, or you can uh, attach it to a PWM controller, um, but very versatile in all sorts of projects. And recently I made these little light stands, which are the same LED uh, strands encased in just like a, a straw. And if I plug those in, also three volts, I have a little bit of a standing LED light. Lots of fun to tinker with. No need for coding, very basic electronics work. All you need is power supply. Uh, and a soldering iron if you want to solder some of these together. So you can have a lot of fun with a variety of different LED lights. Next up, I have a few pieces of production gear. Uh, no cameras, new cameras this year, but things that really helped me in filming my own videos at home. Uh, the first of which I did a review of just earlier this past month, and it's a slider. I 
really love this thing. It's made from iFootage and it's a two axis motorized slider that gives you a little bit of motion control, computerized motion control to either your iPhone or a small mirrorless camera. Uh, as I demonstrated, it just moves across this one axis uh, right here, this linear axis on this rail. And you can, without having to use a phone app or having to tap buttons, you can actually manually, physically let it know where you want your start and end points to be. So I can say if I want my start point to be here, I tap right there, my end point right here, and I confirm. And then I can say over an interval of maybe 30 seconds, a minute, if I'm doing a time lapse, maybe over an hour, two hours, I can actually have this move across not only this one linear axis, but also do a rotation. That secondary movement right there. Uh, usually it's a very expensive um, addition if you have a motorized slider from like Edelkrone. Now this isn't cheap. It's priced now, I believe at $800 because of how expensive electronics are and, and shipping uh, for this stuff manufactured overseas. So definitely it's a, a little of a luxury, but uh, when filming at home, getting footage of miniatures of models or even uh, just having a second camera to run on a location going when we shot our short film uh, this past summer, this was invaluable in just giving a little bit of movement to those shots and it's a part of our travel kit. Uh, moving on, um, some another thing that's added extra bit of production value to some of the, the stuff I've been filming at home is a tiny fogging machine. So we've experimented with some of the compressed air, you know, hazing devices before, which give a nice haze in the background, but I want more wispy smoke. Uh, these are basically repurposed vape machines uh, in, a, in a form factor that uses vegetable glycerin as the consumable and with a bunch of different hose accessories, but allow you to generate some nice wispy fog effects uh, for photography, for portrait work, for miniatures work, um, and not necessarily powerful enough to fill up a large studio space, uh, but if you're doing something that's more tabletop size, you can have accessories that can really add to the scene. And different formulations of that fog juice allow for you know the fog to react differently, to sit and be more present, uh, and do more than just add a haze to the whole ambiance. Uh, this one comes from Microfogger, US-based company. I also like the Smoke Genie. Don't have that unit here because Adam's actually using it in some of his props that he made, his Ghost Trap, for example, that he brought to New York Comic Con. Uh, but both that Smoke Genie and the Microfogger have been really fun devices to use uh, on set, both at home and in the studio here. And lastly, I've talked about these lights before. These are the Loom Cube lights. They're really powerful LEDs uh, for miniatures work. They have accessories magnetically attached, you know, like a, a snoot here to just give a little bit of beam. Uh, but what I like and what I have bought from them this year are these tiny tripod stands. I just love how compact this, they are, really easy to deploy. I just turn this to lock it in place and they telescope up to about 30 inches or so, which not necessarily high enough for you know big studio work, but for tabletop work. Um, and you can maybe put a webcam on this. They're just a quarter, uh, quarter inch screw mount or small light on this. Uh, really useful, lightweight, low profile. What I like is that they don't have a lot of presence on the desk. I can just place it around here on an Apple box. Uh, and allows me to get this light position into place without having to rig something complex up. Um, so if you have a small light panel or one of these loom cubes, I recommend looking into one of these small light stands. And lastly, uh, it wouldn't be a tested video without a piece of novel and cutting edge technology. And this is something I've been waiting for for a long time from Looking Glass uh, Factory. This is their Looking Glass portrait that they launched as a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, gosh, it must have been almost a year ago now, and I got a chance to preview it. Uh, this is a shipping production unit that I got from backing it, and 
I love having this on my desk. It's what they call a light field display. Um, colloquially, it's like a multi-view display. So as opposed to displaying one image like you get on a standard picture frame uh, or even two images for what you'd see on maybe a stereo 3D video uh, or image, here it's displaying dozens of images all at the same time, pass through their filter, even though your eye only sees two of those images. So they process uh, either like portrait photos from an iPhone or basically any photo with depth information and render it out in a way so it's actually displaying all those views at the same time on some built-in hardware, built-in storage, runs off USB-C, and I have the cycling on my desk with my iPhone portrait photos, as well as some videos I've shot with the new cinematic mode, as well as some uh, light field videos that you can take yourself with some, uh, some consumer gear. It just feels like a little bit of that future that the company uh, Looking Glass always tried to make in their pursuit of the holograms. We've been following their company for a long time now, and this feels like something finally that makes sense for uh, early adopters to really jump on uh, into with uh, regular updates on their software and also cameras everywhere that take photos that work with this. So I really love having this looking glass portrait on my desk. So those are a few of my favorite things. Uh, I do have some coffee table books I want to share with you, but that will be in a future video because there's some that haven't quite arrived. They're shipping in December that I'm looking forward to checking out. But I will have links to everything that I mentioned in the description below. And like I said, uh, the rest of the team will be sharing their favorite things from this past year in the coming weeks. Uh, happy holidays. Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for watching our videos. And we'll see you next time. Bye.